what are we trying to learn? Everyone is saying, I'm a student, I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to get more ilm. What are you trying to learn? Everyone's saying, I'm a student, I'm a talib. Don't say Taliban, you're going to get a different idea at that time. They're taking everything and they're turning it upside down in this Ahir Zaman. Hmm? I'm here to learn, but what are we learning? What is this ilm that we are talking about? Different kinds of ilm. There are thousands, millions, billions kinds of ilm. In this world, everything you see that is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is ilm in it, correct? Can we lower down the volume a little bit so that the echo is not Abi Janam? Abi Jan. Allah Razuls. So, Ayuz Billahi Mina Shaitan Rajim. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. We're asking support, of course, from our Shaykh to send us something to speak. This is not a memorized speech. This is not something that we've prepared. This is something that our hearts must be open and connected to those ones who are sitting in divine presence to send us something that is going to be of benefit to us for this Jamaat, for this time. Because the religion, it is fresh and it is alive. It is not a museum religion. Spirituality is not a museum practice, it's not a ritual. And you take away everything, what you're left with is just the remembrance of Allah. But what is the remembrance of Allah? Pulling your tasbih, saying Allah, that is the remembrance. That way munafiq can do it, kafir can do it, a recording can also do it. Strip away everything, what is the remembrance of Allah? You remember what you know. No. You remember what you experience. So what are we experiencing? Don't say we experience Allah. Suddenly everyone became prophet to experience Allah. What are we sent down here to learn? We speak about ilm. Everything that is in creation, from the smallest atoms to the biggest galaxies, there is ilm in it. But what is it that is in there for us? What is the ilm that is going to be beneficial to us? Out of these uncountable ilms, of uncountable alums, what is the ilm that is for us? This in the Ahir Zaman has become a marifat, is a hidden knowledge. Because you take this in your hand, it gives so much supposedly ill. Good ill and bad ill. How do you know which one is for us? How do you know which one is beneficial and what is not? To understand that the knowledge that is not beneficial, it becomes a curse to us. Not just something non-beneficial, it becomes a curse. Because the Holy Prophet is saying, Be busy with the knowledge that concerns you. If the knowledge it doesn't concern you, that is called a malayani, things that don't concern you. And things that don't concern us, Holy Prophet is saying, if you want to see that one who is not loved by Allah, then you'll find him busy with malayani, busy with things that do not concern him. Then in itself, to find what is knowledge that concerns us, that is for us, that in itself is a hidden knowledge. Because how do we know what concerns us and what doesn't concern us? Put everything away, let's look in the matters of religion. And what is this religion? So many people have so many different answers. Every one is issuing fatwa these days. Let's look at what the Prophet said. Because the language is, the religion it is from him. It is not from anyone else. 
Some say we take it from Allah. If you take it from Allah, that time you are the Prophet. But our religion is saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. That the knowledge of Allah is coming through the bab of ilm, through the Prophet wasallam. We learn our religion through him. And what did the Prophet wasallam speak to us about? When Jibreel wasallam came, he descended. And he came in the appearance of a man. He'll come in different appearances. But when he comes in the appearance of a man, he is always wearing a jubba, having a full beard, wearing a sarak, a turban. He's not having a goatee. He's not having a shawl. He's holding a cane. And he came and he started to quiz the Prophet wasalam, asking him, Speak to me, tell me, what is Islam? That was Jibreel alayhi salam, which later the companion said we did not, he was dressed all in completely white, immaculate, and he did not have a speck of dirt on him, which is very unusual. Those Sahabis, they saw Jibreel alayhi salam. Not today, some Imams, they're giving salams to Jibreel and to other malaikat. When they were praying Lelatul uh, Qadir on the 27th, then later there were Wahhabi, other Imams saying, You sh cannot say such a thing like this. So he retracts it. This one was real. And Jibreel salam, asked him, What is Islam? Correct? What is Iman? What is Islam? The religion. Five pillars. What is Iman? Faith. Because so many can have the religion, but they're missing the faith. Who had religion and he missed his faith? Who is there as an example? Who is there as a giant in front of us? That the Ahli Sunnah wa Jama'ah is saying, if you are not, go in, go upstairs and rest. You, ready? This is Sohbat. Who it is that Ahli Sunnah says that what he wrote is second only to the Qur'an? That anyone who is against to his teachings is against to the Qur'an, against to Islam. Who is that one who is only afforded the title of Hujjatul Islam? Imam al-Ghazali. May Allah sanctify his spirit, yes. And sanctify his secret because he is a saint. That one had his religion, correct? And he came from a lineage of scholars and alims, not today's internet scholars. Scholars, real scholars and alim, who did not even look at one haram in his life. He had religion and he was able to tackle any matter of religion, but in his own sayings, in his own writings, in his own admission, he says, I don't have faith. When did he realize that he had faith? When did he learn his faith? Through his own words, when he sat with the people of Zikr. And when he gave up everything that is the trappings of religion, and he went with the people of Zikr, the people of Zawq, the people who taste. And he came back and he penned that work. The Ahli Sunnah scholars say those who are against this work is definitely a deviation. And that work is the Ihya Humuluddin. And the Ihya, that was when he collected his faith and with that faith and with Islam, he put things together and from that time until now, until Judgment Day, it shines a light to us. And what is that light? It makes our religion beautiful. It makes our religion, our faith and our religion strong and it gives us taqwa and what is that there is a third part of the answer third part of the question 
that Jibreel salam, asked the Holy Prophet salam, tell me what is Islam, tell me what is Iman, and tell me what is Ihsan. It's to worship Allah as if you see Him. And if you don't see Him, to know that He sees you. So to worship Allah as if you see Him. If you don't see Him, to know that He sees you. This is experience. This is when you start tasting your faith. How do you reach to that point? How do you reach to that point of tasting that faith? So we know that through that hadith, Islam is just one part of it, meaning the five pillars of Islam. And faith, Namantu Billahi wa Malaikatihi wa Kutubihi, continuing the six articles of faith, it is another part of it. But the completion of our religion, of deen, you have to have a son where you start tasting. How does one do that to start tasting? These days everyone starts to say that they taste. Uh, here so many people, especially Sufi kind of people, Taso kind of people, I close my eyes, all I see is Allah. I clear my thoughts and I'm only in Allah's presence. We should not be speaking like that. Allah's presence, it is frightening. Allah's presence, that even the Holy Prophet والسلام, did not want to meet his Lord alone. Asking Jibreel alayhi salam. It's not to say he did not want to, but he's saying to Jibreel alayhi salam, are you going to leave me now? Are you going to leave your friend after you've been my companion all this time? In the night of Miraj at Sidrat al-Muntaha, and, si and Jibreel alayhi salam says, after the, at from this point, Ya Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, if I were to take one step forward, the divine lights will hit me and I will perish into non-existence because my creation, the way that I've been created, cannot come close to Divine Presence. Holy Prophet Allah saying he spent four times 40,000 years, light years, traveling from Sidrat al-Muntaha to Divine Presence. We should refrain from speaking like that because people of other religions, they speak like that. God woke me up this morning. Today I was having my coffee and I was speaking to God and God said to me, do this and this and this. In Islam, Allah spoke one time <coughs> to one prophet. Let's put the holy prophet aside for now. To Hazrat Musa salam. And because Allah directly spoke to him, he is known as Kalimullah. You may say you feel Closer to Allah, yes. That's something else. So what is this ilm that we have to learn? What is this ilm that is beyond knowing the shariat and the fiqh? What is this ilm beyond understanding, mm, say, the nuances of our faith? What is this ilm that brings Ihsan and beauty and completion. This is when the end of their way is the beginning of ours. We don't need to look at so many different places. We need to look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said to us. Anything that we are coming up with that does not lean against the ayat. And the sayings of the Prophet is just nothing but our own philosophy, our own ideology. Not necessary to look so seriously into it. What is the reason of our creation? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, We have not created the ins and the jinns except to know us and to worship us. This is the reason of our creation. We cannot worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless we know Him. Out of uncountable creatures that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, 
none has been created to know him except for man. Man is the only one that has been created to know him. Man is the only one who has been created to represent him. Once you start understanding that this is the only knowledge that we must run towards to know our Lord, that time our soul will be at peace. Salam will reach to us because we're fulfilling the reason of our creation. But the Holy Prophet said, the one who knows himself, he knows his Lord. Then the key to knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to know yourself. This doesn't mean like so many people are thinking, you want to go to sleep? Go to sleep. This does not mean, like so many people are thinking, Allah is inside of us. No. One holy breath is given to Adam salam, and we're animated because of that. To know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the highest knowledge. There is no other knowledge that is higher than that. But the way to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is to know ourself. And to know ourself, this is what Turuk's Tariqat's Tasawuf is concentrating on. To know yourself, you have to study yourself. To study yourself, you have to come out from yourself. And you have to look. You have to have the mirror that is inside. It's not inside of us. It is outside. The eyes that can carry everything in creation to witness and to see does not have the ability to see us, ourselves, even physically. You have to need, you have to use a reflection. That reflection is Muhammad Rasulullah That reflection it is through the inheritors that is following in the way of the Prophet <coughs> That way, we measure where we are. If our shahada is true, where we are and how we're holding on to that Prophet <coughs> In every way that we are living, in our thoughts, in our actions, in our intentions. That way, we will know our Lord. It's not just to say, oh, you are going to carry some sunnats. No. It's not just to say, okay, now you're going to wear this, you're going to wear this, you're going to wear this, you're going to come closer. Given, that is very good. Because to revive one sunnat, especially in these times in the Ahir Zaman, your faith is like carrying live coal. And you know how difficult it is to carry the sunnat, especially in these days, in this climate, in these countries. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to look at it and not um, place any value on it. He does. Understanding in the days of the Prophet wasalam, the Muslims too, they had a very special identity that is different from the identity of the unbelievers at that time, correct? We're not wearing Arab clothes or Turkish clothes, we're wearing Muslim clothes. At that time, when everyone dressed more or less the same, especially in the same cultural way, Prophet says, they tie their turban like that, you tie your turban like this. They wear their clothes like that, you wear your clothes like this, physically. So that even when they walk, everybody knows that these are the ones following Muhammad And they were persecuted because of that. But no, not just that physically that we're talking about, following the Prophet and holding on to it. We're talking about the knowledge now that is a batin knowledge. The knowledge for you to know yourself. Not to know your spirit, but it is to know what blocks your spirit from returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the knowledge, especially in the Naqshbandi way, that we are concentrating on. The 70,000 veils that separates us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us to know 
and to understand, like what we said earlier, this world, this dunya is an enemy. What are the enemies around us that pulls us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Four. Nafsu, shaitan, hawa, dunya. And concentrating on the nafs to know ourselves, that enemy that is batin, that is inside of us, that sabotages us, that so many are not even acknowledging, and not understanding. The Holy Prophet is saying, the one who has one drop, I'm paraphrasing, he has one drop of arrogance in his heart, or jealousy, he cannot enter into paradise. We're not looking at fiqh, what we do or what we don't do. We're not looking at what we know or what we believe. We're looking at the perfection of the religion now. What will destroy our fiqh? What will destroy our belief? It's not so much you are collecting new knowledge. It is about getting rid of knowledge about yourself that you should not keep. How many are concentrating on this evil that is called anger? How many are concentrating on this evil that is called arrogance? How many are concentrating on this evil that is called stubbornness? How many are concentrating on this evil that is called envy? How many schools are there out there that concentrate on this? There are countless schools out there every day mm, that talks about different kinds of ilm within the deen. But you'll be very hard pressed to find any school, or any organization, or any institute, or even any jamaat that concentrates on this and following and trying to get rid of this evil that is inside of us to make us at least to understand and to realize. Majority assume is not there, or it's very simple. Just say tawbah and you'll be forgiven. What's important is tajweed. What is important? It is to know the fardu ayn. I'm not knocking this down. Yes, you should know all these things. But it is like a man who is guarding priceless treasure and is building a fort around it and is leaving his back door open. That's not intelligence. And this is going to stop us from knowing our Lord. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a prayer that we make. There is a prayer that is coming from the Holy Prophet That in this way, we're supposed, we're supposed to make it every night. Salatul Najat. Before we make the dua, after we give salams, we say, Ya Rabbi, just as fire consumes wood, so envy consumes all my good deeds. It consumes all my good deeds. Help me to get rid of my envy. It makes a man now to understand himself, to take the mirror and to look at himself. And what separates him from his Lord to cure the sickness that he has. This is important. Otherwise, you can build the strongest fort, you can put the most priceless treasure, but your back door is open, the enemy will come in and steal everything away without you understanding and you'll be left with nothing. Inshallah Rahman, may we be those ones who are not going to be losers when we enter into the grave. May we be ones who are awake and aware to keep our religion strong, to keep our shahadat strong, not to make any hidden shirk and to take away all the ilahs from our heart for the throne of Allah that is our heart to contain but Allah, nothing but Allah. May Allah forgive me and bless you for the sake of the Holy Prophet in our Shaykh Al-Fatiha. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.